Dear participants, good morning, good afternoon, or good evening to all of you. I am very happy to be here with you one more time to continue our journey through the program of Satya Sai Education in Human Values together. In this second session of module two from course one, we are going to widen our vision with a truly engaging subject entitled An Environment and Culture of Love. This session has got two parts. In the first part, from now till 11, Raksha Matani is going to share with us a very inspiring presentation on this topic followed by 10 minutes for questions and answers as usual. Then we will have a five minutes break. And in the second part, we are going to have an interactive workshop guided by myself, Elena Rodriguez from 11.05 till 12. Remember to verify that you have written your name correctly. Keep your microphone and camera off and write down your questions on a piece of paper during the presentation until we start the questions and answers part just after the presentation. And now, before introducing our first speaker of today, we would like to be prepared for the presentation and we want to invite you to stay for two minutes in the practice of silent sitting to observe our natural breathing. For this practice, we are going to sit on the chair with our back straight, our arms relaxed, and our hands together on our lap. Our feet placed parallel on the floor so that we feel the surface of the floor on our feet. In this position, we are going to close our eyes and observe our natural breathing process in silence for two minutes. Just pay attention to how the air goes in and out naturally through our nostrils. I, I'm going to play a note on the flute to start and to finish the practice.
now we can open our eyes again slowly and come back to this moment and follow the session too. Our first speaker of today, as I was telling you before, is Raksa Matani. And as most of you have met her already, I am just going to recall and highlight the most important details of her professional route in this beautiful Satya Sai Educare path. Raksha is one of the faculty members of this institute and belongs to the Institute of Satya Sai Education of South Europe International Team of Trainers and also to the Spanish team of, of trainers. As you already know well, Raksha is passionate about education in human values and has dedicated most of her professional life to implement an educational model that promotes human excellence, inspired by and based on the philosophy and methodology of Satya Sai Educare. Currently, she works in the British International School, Green Valley School in Palma de Mallorca, Spain, where she teaches weekly human values lessons to all the primary and secondary students. She is also the Education in Human Values and Character Building Director at the school, taking care of the social and emotional well being of every child. Today, Raksha is going to inspire all of us once more by sharing her deep and clear understanding of the Satya Sai teachings regarding an environment and culture of love and her endearing findings when she implements the program of the Satya Sai Education in Human Values in her weekly lessons with her beloved students. So I have the honor once more to welcome our dear Raksha Matani with my heart full of love and gratitude. Good morning, dear Raksha. Please go ahead. Good morning, dear Elena. Thank you so much for your warm welcome, loving as always. And good morning, good evening, good night to all of you from wherever you are connected. Yet wherever you are, it's this heart-to-heart -heart connection that binds us and brings us together here to get today once again. So as Elena was saying, it is an absolute honor for me today to share and speak about this inspiring topic of an environment and culture of love. Um, as we can see here, I think there are, it's very clear there are three key words in this presentation. We have environment, we have culture, and of course, we have the value of love. So I think just as a reminder, it would be nice for us to, to just recall that when we started with module one, when we started speaking about the human values, uh, we actually started with the value of love. So before moving into environment and culture and how to create an environment and culture of love, let us just recall some key um, facts, I would say, but also key understanding about what we discovered when we spoke about love. We realized that love is not an emotion. It's not just a simple emotion. Um, you know, we can have sometimes positive, negative emotions. They change all the time. We said that love is an energy. It is universal. It is something that has always existed. It exists and always will. So in that sense, it is eternal and changeless. We spoke a lot about the characteristics of this pure universal love. And we also said that love is actually the natural characteristic of every human being. So it is that which defines us. And as we said, the founder of the program, Satya Sai, he referred to us many times as embodiments of love. So knowing this, knowing that we are uh, embodiments of love, the question then arises, so how can we create an environment and a culture of love in our lives? 
So now we move on to asking ourselves a little bit more about the word environment. I'm sure you will all agree that maybe when we think about the word environment, what do we actually understand by environment? Uh, maybe just as with me, when I think of environment, the first kind of image that comes to my mind is an image maybe of nature, somewhere where I'm surrounded by this beautiful environment that Mother Earth always gives us with. So in this sense, the environment is something physical. But when we speak about environment, it's not just the physical environment in terms of, you know, Mother Nature and planet Earth, but also the physical environment um, in our home, the physical environment in our workplace. And that has a lot to do with even just the furniture, how things are placed, how we create a neat, tidy environment in our daily lives. So all of this physical part also is an environment that we are surrounded by. But apart from just the physical environment, I, I think we will all agree that we also are surrounded by a social environment. So in this sense, this begins with our families, of course. So each one of us, uh, we have different families, but we all somehow, uh, we, you know, our parents, our siblings, our other relatives, but not just our families, our close friends as well. And even, you know, people who are, we are surrounded by in our workplace, general society. So all of these uh, different um, elements also are part of our environment and even things like the media. So for example, the information we receive through all the different media, somehow that also is part of the environment that we are surrounded by. So we have our physical environment and we have the social environment in the context of a school. Of course, for a student's life, apart from everything they receive from home and society uh, at a big picture, it is also what a student receives at school. So their teachers, the whole staff that uh, comprises a school faculty somehow is also that social environment for a child. So knowing that our environment has these two sides to it, the physical and the social, uh, I always like to think about this program that we keep diving deeper within the content of what we are looking into and this diving deeper within sometimes comes through the art of questioning. So this is a question that I have asked myself many times. So the environment, is it something that only surrounds us? So like we saw the physical, the social environment, of course, it's something that surrounds us, this group of people, the, the places we're in. It's something that exactly we, we belong to an environment that is surrounding us. But maybe also this question, do we actually have an effect on the environment too? So is it something that only surrounds us or is it something that we too, with our thoughts, words, actions, have an effect on the environment, both physical and social. Intuitively, the answer that comes from within is, of course, it is a relationship that we share. And somehow, I chose this beautiful picture, uh, this lovely image of these two gorillas, because for me, it truly represents somehow this relationship of love, uh, somehow even protection, companionship, um, trust, and going back to the environment and whether it only surrounds us or do we also have an effect on our environment, I see that, you know, we always have this constant exchange. So the environment affects us and what we do has an effect on the environment too. And in this sense, we can say that there exists a relationship of interdependence. So once again, everything that each one of us as individuals that make up our respective societies, everything that we do has an effect on our environment. And similarly, what everyone else does has an effect on us too. So there is this relationship of interdependence. 
This brings me to understanding and going a bit further even because sometimes, I don't know if it's happened to some of you, but many times I see things in society that uh, dishearten me, that make me sad, or that somehow make me feel even discouraged. And I don't maybe feel like, how can I be connected to this? I don't feel this violence, or um, I don't see myself reflected in this. However, again, going to this spiritual vision of unity, if one understands that we are all connected by this energy of love, that we all have these tendencies, of course, of sometimes we have to be careful not to be carried away by our negative feelings, by jealousy, by anger. So, of course, we, we can choose what to feed within us, these values, of course, but also when we see things in society that maybe not necessarily reflect our personal actions in that moment, uh, it makes me very humble to, to feel within that everything I see is a reflection of what we as individuals, our actions sum up to somehow have the result in society. And like I said, this makes me feel humble in the sense that uh, somehow I realize this connection and I, I, I kind of feel part of a wider picture. And this is where our responsibility, each one of us, comes to how can we create that environment and love in our life and also help create that environment of love in our societies. And this just can be reflected in this sense when we think about environment, maybe we can understand environment as, as we see here, this beautiful baby is looking at himself in the mirror and you know through this spiritual vision of unity indeed somehow me the reflection of me is actually we so again whatever we do whatever we think whatever we say has an effect on our surroundings and the same, whatever the surrounding provides us with has an effect on us. So there is once again, that relationship of interdependence. Having spoken a bit about environment, it's, it's nice now that we move on to asking ourselves what we understand by culture. I am sure that each one of us have our thoughts about culture. And uh, many times we may speak about local culture or things that make us different in some countries from another, the traditions, the, even the food we eat, the different styles of dressing, all of those different things. But let's just go to the root of what the word culture means. I think it's very interesting and very inspiring and enlightening many times when we look into the etymology of the words to understand their true root and meaning. So the word culture has its Latin root in cultivare, which actually means to cultivate, to grow, to nourish, and to refine. These words are so beautiful, to cultivate, to grow, to nourish, and to refine. If you recall, this has a very close connection to when we looked at the two Latin roots of the word education, educare, and educare. Educare had to do with creating this environment where we protect and nourish, and educare had to do with bringing out. So somehow, you see, in cultivare, in culture, we have this aspect of nourishing, cultivating, when, an, you know, when um, uh, an agriculturist cultivates the land, all of the love that's placed in, in protecting this land, and also, but the, 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 the firm belief that the seeds that we are planting, they already have that potential within, and we just need to create the right environment for them to grow and blossom. And here there's a very beautiful word too that says refine. So let's just keep this there in, in our thoughts and in our understanding, because we will come back to these terms in just a few uh, moments. But also according to the dictionary, and this is maybe what we understand most commonly about culture, culture represents the ideas, the customs, the social behavior, and the way of life of a particular group 
of people or society. So indeed, what we do as a group, as a society, it defines a way of life. We, we create habits and customs, traditions, and many times when we talk about culture, even the sports, the music, the arts are represented here. So knowing this and just keeping this in mind, I think it's very inspiring at this moment to read one of Satisai's quotes on what he says about culture. Because, okay, if culture has to do with all these habits, the customs, uh, you know, the traditions, and if we all may have different, uh, different uh, cultures because of the part of the world we come from, or maybe the different practices and, and customs in different places, um, I always have this question, is there any common global culture that somehow unites us all together and brings us together? And this quote is actually, I took it from two different extracts of Satyasai's discourses. And um, it's very inspiring to read, but I just chose some, a short extract from each one, put them together, because it really helped me in my own understanding of this environment and culture of love. And Satyasai says, there is no difference between spirituality and culture. Culture is that which brings about refinement. Refinement consists of removing all that is unnecessary and unwanted. In heart culture, you must cultivate the field of the heart and remove the weeds. Water to help the plant grow is the quality of love. The harvest, which is the reward of all this spiritual discipline, is wisdom. Isn't that so beautiful? So here the founder of SSEHB is telling us that there is absolutely no difference between spirituality and culture. And then he reminds us that culture is all about refinement. And when we think of the word refinement, it somehow suggests getting rid of any impurity so that, you know, when, when a miner finds the gold, they get rid of the impurity so that they have just the pure gold. So somehow when we refine our characters and as Satyasai says, removing all that is unnecessary and unwanted, this links so beautifully to the value of truth, to that fundamental question, who am I? Am I just a body, just a mind, or am I something beyond just these changeless, these changing things all the time? So Satisai is always inviting us, like Socrates, like Plato, to discover who we truly are. And this is why in this heart culture, which he says in his own words, heart culture, of course, always referring to the spiritual heart, to that source of wisdom within each one of us, to that conscience, inner knowledge. He says that we must cultivate this field and remove the weeds. And what are these weeds? Again, these unwanted uh, negative emotions, uh, like sometimes we're faced with, again, jealousy, anger, pride, attachment, these things that somehow move us away from who we truly are. And Satisai defines water. He uses water as the symbol to somehow in us for our hearts to be cultivated. It is the quality of love. And then he says that the harvest, what do we, the fruits of all of this is the spiritual discipline, which the reward is wisdom. Wisdom understood as practical knowledge. So again, Satisai Educare is practical knowledge. So having said that, I would just like to uh, share another quote from Satisai, which is very beautiful related to culture too. And he says in one extract, he says, what is culture? You think it is a style of life, but this is not so. Culture is that which transforms your life into an ideal life. 
So again, we saw in the definition that it's a way of life. And here the founder is telling us to go beyond that concept. And it is not just a way of life. It is actually spirituality. It is actually that which transforms us to be ideal human beings. And how can we be ideal human beings? By discovering who we truly are and radiating that to our societies. So in this sense, just as an understanding of everything we have spoken, when we understand that love is the foundation and the undercurrent of everything, then somehow an environment of love will be created naturally through our actions and behavior. And we already might be thinking, but in our societies, we don't really sometimes see that reflection. We don't really see that everything surrounding us uh, you know, is guided by this energy of love. I think somehow this takes us back to once again, that spiritual vision of unity and how each one of us, what we do, um, has an effect on each other. And that's why this is an inward journey, first of all, where we're able to tune ourselves to not just discover this source of love within, but to manifest it, to really put it into practice in our lives, because that is how we can create an environment of love. And then as a community, we will reflect this when we understand it, when we practice it. And this attitude will create indeed a culture of love. So we can say that culture of love understood as something broader and wider is something that connects us all together. It's something that's common to all and it is universal, irrespective of our different traditions, customs, thoughts and beliefs. Somehow this culture of love brings us all together, binding us through this source and energy of love. And I would just like to end this more theoretical part, let's put it this way, or this part with more information. Uh, that is also important because, you know, I feel that sometimes with myself, when I, when I read inspiring things, when I hear inspiring quotes, when it is also uh, reflected through inspiring images, uh, somehow there's a click within and there's this understanding because the wisdom already lies within each, every one of us. But again, sometimes uh, just sharing it together brings greater awareness. So I'd like to just summarize this part with um, these five nature images that uh, for me explain very well how to create this environment and culture of love and how it is our responsibility as well, each and every one of us. So in order for us to radiate, to radiate who we truly are, this um, energy, this, these latent human values that we all have within, first, we really need to dive deep within to discover who we are. If you remember when George presented the value of love, sorry, not the value of love, the value of truth, you see, they're so interconnected that sometimes you even confuse when you speak of, about them. So when he presented the value of truth and he showed us the, the Greek origin of the word. I remember, and for me, that was very enlightening when he shared that uh, in Greek, you know, truth is Alicia and the two parts are and lethe, which means to not forget or hide who you truly are. So in this sense, we really need to first dive deep within ourselves to discover and not forget our true nature. And then to really cultivate like the land, like this beautiful tree, to really strengthen the roots of this spirituality, of this common culture of love. And in that, when we do that, then comes this vision of unity, this understanding of unity in diversity, like with this rainbow. It may have different colors, but they all come together and are united in such a beautiful way. And for me, it's always so important to remember that everything I do, even a small, simple thought has an effect on our surroundings. And I'm sure you will agree with me that even sometimes we might be sitting with a friend, with our partner, with, with a parent, uh, anyone, uh, a colleague at work. And even though we may not be speaking, even though we may not uh, do something, just what we're thinking has an effect on the other person. Somehow they can 
perceive our what we're feeling within and i'm sure we have all experienced that too so that presence comes already from our thoughts so everything we do we think and we say has an effect like this ripple effect on our surroundings so after seeing this environment and culture of love and this relationship of interdependence i would just like to share also before moving on of course one thing that's very important is that to experience and to radiate this environment of love and create this culture of love in our societies and let's say it like in outside we we need to of course begin tuning ourselves from within and we have seen this so many times throughout this program this uh, unity and purity of head heart and hands which is so nicely reflected in this beautiful image by the artist Turcios, where he is even showing the word afinando, which means tuning our head, heart and hands so that they are aligned. So once we are able to align ourselves internally, then we can also radiate this environment and culture of love. So I would just like to share a practical implementation of how um, through my experience over the years, the uh, 14, 15 years I've been teaching and I've had the joy to, especially in the last eight years, teach human values as a subject more concretely. So before that I was an English teacher and of course in any subject one teaches, you can always instill and uh, have human values as the foundation. But right now I even have the, the good fortune as Elena shared to have weekly uh, human values lessons with the beautiful children. I am gifted with their presence every single day of my life. And I would just like to share that the school I work in, it's not a Satyasai school. It's not even an adopted school. An adopted school is a school where maybe they're not a Satyasai school, but the teachers are trained and they, they would like to implement the program. At this stage, uh, what's happening at the school I work at is that um, the owners, they, they really like the Satyasai Educare program. They would like, uh, you know, it to really be implemented in the school, but it starts with, in this case, with one teacher. So it starts in this case with myself. And Marianne spoke last week, uh, two weeks ago, about the pedagogy of Satyasai Educare. So I'd just like to share some practical implementations of how one can implement this beautiful and transformational methodology in our surroundings, for example, like a school. So of course, an environment and culture of love begins indeed in the classroom every day with every lesson. So we will see in our upcoming sessions when we talk about storytelling when we talk about the practice of silence sitting when we talk about all the other techniques uh, singing group singing group activities uh, the use of quotations all of that helps create indeed an environment of love where students feel nourished protected um, not judged of course guided and corrected when needed but not judged because love as we remember is non-judgmental so in that sense, uh, you know, it's very beautiful to create this environment and culture of love at a daily basis in the classroom. But what I would like to share a little bit more is how to create this environment and culture of love as a school somehow through a common ethos, so through things that bind us together. And for example, at our school, when you enter, I saw this once on the internet, I thought it was a very beautiful sentence. So it says, you know, through the word welcome, when you enter this loving school, consider yourself one of the members of an extraordinarily family. So yes, uh, an extraordinary family, because at the end, we are a family, we all are. But sharing that everyday life with those students, with their families, we, we end up being a large family ourselves. So this is so beautiful. So it's just a reminder that we all belong to this loving, extraordinary family. 
And for example, with the older kids, the 10 and the 11 year old kids in primary, as you can see these images of, um, uh, you know, I, uh, so this I many times says nature is the best teacher. So I was inspired by this thought. And these five images really represent our school ethos. And through the art of questioning, because Educare is not about giving children the answers all the time. It's about trusting that knowledge within and helping them bring it out. So as we can see through these images, through simple questions, I ask them things like, who does the sun shine its light for? And then they give their own answers. I ask them more questions like, does this, you know, is the sun, can we always see the sun shining? or sometimes do we not see the sun shining and why? So they mention clouds and that, you know, sometimes we don't see the sun shining because we're cloud, you know, we, we don't see our value shining sometimes because we're clouded with negative emotions or with anger, with fear. So, you know, it's very nice through questions to see their responses. Even the image of the iceberg, of course, first only seeing what one can see above the surface. And then when I show them what the full iceberg really looks like, I always ask them what this represents for them, what they think. And they start talking about how it's important not to judge a person just by their looks. And we need to really look at the full picture. The tree, I asked them if there's a part of the tree that we don't see, but that's very important. This takes us to the roots and lots of reflections that we share together in the class, the rainbow. I asked them which of the colors for them would be the most important. And of course, they may say things like each one is equally important, beautiful in its own way. But actually, when they come together, it's even more beautiful. The ripple effect, for example, what do we see? What happens when one drop of water falls into this pond, this lake? Uh, and they say, well, you know, it spreads. So somehow we realize that everything we do spreads everything we do has an effect on our surroundings so through these beautiful images and their reflections what i did is with each uh, with this year six class uh, i asked them to choose one of them after we spoke about it uh, very nicely together some of them chose the tree they drew it some of them maybe chose a rainbow some of them chose the ripple effect and what i did is i asked them to in their own words to explain what they understood from these images. This nature is the best teacher. So as we can see, then this is displayed in our school corridor, creating an environment and culture of love where parents uh, this year, maybe due to COVID and stuff, they cannot, but we send them these pictures through newsletters and share it with them, creating this environment of culture of love. Two. So like it says here in year six, we have been learning valuable lessons that nature teaches us. Each one of us chose one of the five images that represent our human values ethos and drew it as well as describing what it means to us. We hope you enjoy the creative work of our inspiring Heartists. I like to call them heartists because they truly are heartists indeed. What they reflect comes directly from the source within. So you see this beautiful display that we had in our, we still have, of course, it's, it's uh, you know, this is the work actually been done just in the month of September and October around school. So here we see their work. Uh, it's so nice. And maybe I would just like to share some of the things that the students have written. It's so beautiful to see their own reflections. So two reflections from the sun, the sun shines for everyone. Even if the clouds are covering the sun, it is always there and it is always shining. Remember that our human values are always there. And then another reflection, we know that the sun shares its light with everyone. We try to share our human values with everyone, including our plants and animals. About the iceberg, uh, one of the students says, in human values, we learned that it's not fair to judge someone by their look. So you have to go deeper to understand the person. He even goes on to saying, sometimes you even have to go deeper to understand yourself. Isn't that so wise? 
another reflection when you look at someone and say that person is ungrateful or disrespectful look at this iceberg on the outside it is small but when you dive in deep into the water you see that deep under the iceberg has a lot more than just a clump of snow so now you know never judge a book by its cover and dive deep to this to experience much more than the eye can see such wise reflections about the tree just two it just fills my heart with joy to see uh, all this wisdom that comes from within with the children so one of the students says the roots of the tree are the most important part of the tree because it gives the tree its nutrients and water I love this. It's the importantest <laughs> part of the tree, like human values are for us. And another reflection, the tree represents that the roots hold it up no matter what, like the human values hold us up. And talking about the, the rainbow, here's one reflection. Every color together makes a team and each color is special in its own way and then this student remembered uh, this word play that we have team together everyone achieves more and this very profound reflection too about the the rainbow this shows me that there's a big world there outside and also what we imagine can come true because this planet has a lot of secrets that we don't know and the rainbow has more colors that we imagine. We also have many more colors that we imagine. Isn't that so profound? So, like I said, you know, this artwork or these writings, they, re they, they don't just decorate the school and create an environment of love on, you know, on the walls. It somehow really reflects their own understanding, what we do in these classes and how it is reflected in their own lives too. And then we have the ripple effect also. The ripple effect represents if you do something a little wrong, it can always spread into a problem. So something small always ends up in problems. If you spread something good, we inspire people. And this little girl, another very profound reflection, one drop of water spreads into bigger and bigger. Like the same when you spread rumors. This ends up spreading until it spreads to the person and it can affect them in a very hard way. And maybe rumors are fake and maybe the person never did that. So they all take it to their own experiences, to their own personal understanding. And it's so nice to, you know, when other students walk around, the other staff members, just to read through such inspiring uh, comments. And just a few more pictures. I won't go into detail with, um, with all of them, but I think it's just a, a nice way to reflect this environment and culture of love created in a school through these, in this case, for example, these five key images that somehow represent our ethos and, of course, our head, heart and hands circuit. So another class, sorry, in year five, each one of us drew our own representation of the human values circuit, head, heart and hands. And then we also wrote a short description explaining how it works in our own words. We hope you enjoy seeing and reading our hard work. So a uh, class that's younger than the year sixes, so the, the eight to nine year olds, they did the same thing, but talking about the head, heart, hand circuit. So once again, through the art of introspection, through the image of Turcios, that's so nice tuning. And these are some of their beautiful pictures. I mean, I just, I mean, I just, uh, I'm amazed at their creativity, how this heart is kind of growing from the ground. Uh, you know, inspired by Turcios, of course, somehow tuning the soil, the roots are filled with hearts of love, as you can see, uh, this girl fully inspired by Turcios, but she added her own like musical notes to it to somehow reflect that when we are tuned, what comes out is nice and harmonious from us. Again, this is also reflected across the school in one of the corridors. 
I won't read through the reflections again, just uh, but you can get an idea. Each one explains it in their own words. For example, this child talks about heart balloons going into the sky when we tune our head, heart and hands. We have more beautiful reflections, just a highlight of one of the sentences. So when we use our head, heart and hands, we can feel the beautiful music blowing out of our hearts. Isn't that so special? And yes, you know, all of these wonderful artists, indeed their work, but again, what is reflected is their understanding of this deep knowledge that already lies with, deep within them. And as you can see, like in school, this is what you will see when you walk around the corridors and it really does create an environment and culture of love. In another class, we reflected upon why we have human values lessons, what we actually learn through these lessons. And each child gave their own answer. I wrote it on the board and then, you know, they just copied it in their beautiful handwriting. So we created a very nice mural again with their hard work and artwork. So you see, why do we have human values? And they feel so satisfied and happy when they see their work reflected in school and other students stop by to read what they have said. So why we have human values classes, lots of beautiful things said by them to share our values with everyone to learn to have better behavior, to follow our heart, to not judge somebody without knowing them, to understand that good friends make each other better. These are their own reflections, of course, guided in the class when we, we try to come up with different answers. So, you know, I might just say, maybe some of you can think about the value of friendship if, you know, once they have come up with a few answers, maybe some of you can think about the value of respect or, you know, think about things at home as well, not only at school. So it's very beautiful to see their wisdom from within. And just a, a last final example that I would like to also share with you is uh, this is another year group. And we spoke about radiating respect. We were talking about the value of respect throughout the whole month of October. That's the value we talk about. And what we did is I asked each one of them how we can radiate our respect. And just like the sun, it has its rays. We created this uh, very nice uh, display with their artwork as well. And as you can see, we put it in a place where this is where the students usually have their lunch outside in the courtyard. So it's very nice that they look into this big window and they can see their work, but also other staff members, of course. So here it is, radiating respect. And again, with their own very unique thoughts. Again, I'm not going to read them all, but just for us to have an idea of the kind of things we can do with children, creating those spaces, those moments of awareness so that together we can build, create, and really together like construct this environment and culture of love. And it's, you know, I always ask myself this question, how can one radiate what we truly are? How can we radiate human values, respect? And it all goes back once again to firstly discovering who we are. Of course, we will come across challenges and in school too, the classes are not, it's not like there's never a challenge, but the tools, the way through observation, how we work with the children, not labeling them, but for them to really understand the root of why they're do, doing things, for them to self-correct themselves because they understand and then adjust and not through imposition, but rather through intuition. So this is what I wanted to share with all of you. And it just makes me radiate with joy because the truth is working with these children is one of the greatest gifts that life could have given me. So thank you so much to all of you also for this opportunity of allowing me to share. Elena, Esther, Chris. Thank you, Raksha. Thank you, Raksha. It's, has been, it's been a wonderful presentation, really, and the practical part that to show that it comes through. 
what we are saying, it comes true with the children. And of course, it's, um, it's amazing. And we, we are like um, a, ad, an, ad, admirated with the results. It's very touching, very moving. I was going to say that I had forgotten to tell the people and to all of us to take, to have handkerchiefs near us to wipe our tears while you are speaking because it's so moving to watch the, the results of the drawings of the children. When the children draw like this, when the children focus on the colors like this and do this, that means that they are very healthy inside, very healthy emotionally, mentally, and all these things that we, in, the integrity is there. So congratulations, Raksa, for all this wonderful work that you are doing in the school, really. It has been really moving and touching for all of us. Thanks. Thank you very, very much. And now we, I'm going to invite Esther Chris to, to guide the questions and answer part. So Esther Chris, if you have received some, any question already, and please, for, the, for every participant, please uh, write, use the chat box to, to ask questions for Raksha. Any question that you may have thought, been thinking about during the presentation, please. Now is the time for sending the question to her. And Esther Chris will read them and mm -hmm. I will answer. Thank you. Thank you, Lenita. And thank you, of course, Raksha. It was great to listen to you. So inspiring. My heart, my heart is feeling so happy when I listen to you. And how can we cultivate that environment of and culture of love so thank you very much and i will see uh, if i have questions well i have one for you here it says sometimes at home or at our workplace the environment becomes hostile due to negative dynamics how can I foster an environment of love in the midst of a similar situation? Mm -hmm. That's a very beautiful question, Esther Chris. Thank you so much. Um, I think that, you know, it may sound like um, hard to say that sometimes I really think that the focus has to be within. The focus has to be with oneself. Like I said before, many times we are in situations where maybe the environment is negative due to people's attitudes, comments, but I always try to think of where am I going to place my energy? Mm -hmm. uh, and one question that, very, that helps me very much is, what can I do to help improve the situation? And sometimes more than what can I do to help this improve the situation, what it comes very clear to me is what I should not do in order to make something worse. So for example, I don't know, you know, even at school or in a workplace, sometimes there can be this attitude of complaining or talking behind somebody's back, gossiping. And I just find it very difficult or practically impossible to participate in that kind of conversation. And I think, you know, there are loving ways of doing things. So but I try to remember my, my purpose is not to correct the world. It's not to correct everything around me. It's to correct myself. It's to do what I can do the best for myself. And somehow that then radiates in the environment. So I try to, to focus inward and again see, is there anything I can do to help improve the situation? So sometimes when I see like in the workplace, if there are lots of negative comments about something, I might just say, maybe it would be good to talk about this to, to the person, not maybe here, you know, because I'm sure they will be open to constructive feedback. And what about, so just suggesting some ways, but sometimes they might take the advice and sometimes they may not. So again, where does one place their energy? So I really think that it's a personal responsibility at the end. It mm. has to do with what each one of us can do to give the best of ourselves. And I really believe that then, you know, the results accompany because they do. Because even if you just change your own inner state, that somehow then reflects like the ripple effect, you know, or like the children say, do you want to be part of the problem or do you want to be part of the solution? So what does one choose? One chooses to be part of the solution, to be part of this harmony. 
and you know i think people start getting to know you as well so it's very strange for example in school that someone will sit beside me when it's lunchtime and start gossiping because they just know that I don't participate in those kind of conversations, but maybe they will come up to me to say how they feel about something or about someone, but through a more noble kind of intention. So I really think that we don't have the obligation to correct anyone, just to correct ourselves. So once we tune ourselves within, we also have to let go of the results. I think that is very important for each one of us to practice. Thank you, dear Raksha. So it needs a lot of discrimination and uh, inner inquiring. It's a very special work to do. Thank you so much for your answer. And here I have another one. It's a very uh, interesting question from Kajal. Uh, and this is one question, Raksha, please. What can we do when we see that our good intentions are not reciprocated by our colleagues or family? Again, I think it's very related to this first question. Thank you so much, Kajal. And again, I really think when we do something good, when we have a good intention, who are we actually doing this for? Um, the answer for me is clear from within. You know, I'm just doing it because this is what I feel happy with. This is, I wouldn't be able to do things in a different way because then I wouldn't feel somehow truthful to my to myself to who I am so uh, I think that it's very hard it's not easy but we do have to practice this detachment from the results and this attitude of non-expectation it's 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 sad sometimes it's hard sometimes but definitely I do think that little by little like this rock you know you give it one hammer two three and one day suddenly something something happens and i just want to share for example this um Kaza, this relates to a story with one of my uh, the children i had uh, like three years ago there was this boy who you know in the month of uh january we were doing the value of peace and i took in some quote from inspiring leaders to that the children had to reflect upon and speak about and there was this quote from gandhi i don't remember it exactly but it's come to my mind something like the day the power of love triumphs over the love for power that day the world will experience peace so this little boy you know every time many times when we were i was teaching he didn't appreciate my good intentions, you know, in that sense, he was always, sometimes he would even like roll his eyes and make faces at me or try to distract others. And I just kept like, you know, looking at him with love, treating him with love. I did have to send him to the office once because he was uh, misbehaving and I didn't think it was right for him to be in the office, in the classroom then. So there was a consequence with love. Then I spoke to him, but for months, for three, four months, he was quite disrespectful to me, to be honest. He was quite, you know, his attitude was very challenging. And one day, suddenly in the month of April, I remember this so clearly, uh, one day he said something in class which was very disrespectful and he wanted to like, you know, make me like uh, react. And I remember just saying something and treating him with love and in that moment he started crying he started crying like in front of everyone and he said you know what Mr. Raksha uh, I've just realized something and he said what I have and he said this about himself he said what I have is the love for power I always want to be right I always want to be the last one to say something I want to have the power the power to spoil a lesson the power to for people to follow me and what you're doing is, you, you know, this is the power of love, he said. And he started crying and he said, and this is the power of love. And it's true, only when we all go through this power of love and not the love for power, only then can we actually feel in peace. And I never felt good about myself. So when he said that, you know, of course, the, the first thing I did was actually I approached him and I gave him a huge hug. And more than saying this to me, what really touched me is how he himself realized what made him happy. So I really think, and I never changed my way of treating him because of his disrespect. So I really think that, you know, whether or not people appreciate our good intentions, if we know why we're doing things 
and that's what makes us happy we have to continue just following this you know following our heart the voice of our conscience thank you thank you that's a great teaching because uh, releasing to this attachment to the, to the results it's uh, so important thank you for the way you are sharing us this example that is wonderful dear raksha well i just want now to uh, remember everybody to write their questions to our email if they want to so we will uh, answer them uh, very happy so now i give back the voice to elenita and uh, say thank you again dear raksha thank you sir chris well again the handkerchief my god how beautiful really how be and these things happen and they are true they these things happen and it's very good that the the children in your school they have you there to understand what's going on inside so well so that they can open their heart and sometimes it's painful but it's very relieving so this relief is a wonder, wonderful thing that happens. And you are, have to be ready to give the hug, to receive the heart when it opens and receive the, the gratitude of this person. Thank you, Raksha. That's beautiful, really. Uh, thank you, thank you, thank you. And then now we are going to have a five-minute break. And after the break, we come back and continue with our interactive workshop. So it's 11 and two minutes. So we are going to come back at 11 and seven minutes. Thank you. Thank you, Elena.